But I have a great alternative to Kahoot that I'd like to tell you about in a moment. Uh, if you're familiar with Kahoot, uh, say so in the comments. Give it a thumbs up if you've at least used it. If you're familiar with it, let me know in the, in the comments as we go. Also, in a little bit, we'll be playing a game. So it would be super helpful if we had as many people as possible here uh, in the broadcast. So uh, if you want to share it out, that would be great. Put it on Twitter. Uh, thanks, Chris, the first one to do it. And uh, we'll, we'll look at the alternative in a little bit. We'll play it, and you can see how it's different and how it's similar to Kahoot, which is probably a favorite of yours already. So I see some thumbs up in, in the room. Yep, familiar but never used it. All right, you've heard of Kahoot but haven't used it. All right, well, <laughs> this is going to be uh, a little different than Kahoot but very, very similar as well. So uh, if you're not familiar with me, uh, again, my name is Tony Vincent, and I used to teach fifth grade in Omaha, Nebraska, and then I taught kindergarten through fifth grade as my school's tech specialist, and now I've worked for several years as a self-employed consultant. So I travel to schools and conferences and present to teachers, and when I'm not presenting or traveling, I'm at home playing, trying to find this stuff. So it's really fun. So the alternative I want to tell you about is called Quiz Is. Now, again, if you've heard of Quiz Is, let, let me know in the comments. I, I try to pronounce the last Z so that when you go to quizzes.com ever, you remember there are two Zs at the end. I guess Quiz Is with one Z was already taken. <laughs> uh, if you want me to come to your school, uh, my website is learninginhand.com or just Google Tony Vincent and you'll, you'll find it. There's some... Lots of great information. <laughs> Thank you for asking. So you can play class quiz games. And as a fifth grade teacher, this was my very favorite thing to do. I love playing game shows. I would get out a disco ball. I'd put uh, around the, uh, well, the chalkboard at the time when I was teaching was uh, I'd, I'd wait until after the holidays and get the expensive holiday lights because they'll, they'll be cheap and get the ones that are like Las Vegas where they, they swirl around and they do different patterns. So my students knew when, when they came into the classroom, it was going to be game show day and it was an exciting day. It also probably meant that a test was coming up, but that wasn't important to them. They wanted to play the game. They liked the competition. They liked the social aspect of it. And it's a game. It's fun. And quizzes can help you do that if your students each have a device. Or quizzes is different enough from Kahoot that you can use this in a center or station. So students have their own device. It works in a web browser, so it can work on any device. And uh, well, let's play it, and then we'll compare it to Kahoot. So I know some of you, you're only on your phone and you can't play. But if some of you have a second device that you can play on, let's do it. So let me get this game called up here. Here's, here's the, the quizzes main screen. And uh, I've already got a quiz set up, and I have made a quiz about Periscope. So I want to see what you know about Periscope. And we're going to play live. If you're watching the replay, uh, I'm going to go through the questions too so you see what it's like. But when I click play live, then quizzes has some options that I can do. And um, these options are more numerous than what you get with Kahoot because you can uh, turn off the leaderboard and question timer. That's probably one key difference that's important to know. Sometimes a leaderboard and a question timer can really make students nervous, increase their anxiety. So if you're working with students who have a problem with the competition aspect, you could turn those off. I'm going to leave all the settings on for what we're doing today. And so I have that. I'm going to click Proceed. And now it gives us this join code. So if you have a second device, a computer around, would you please join us by going to join.quizis.com? And then when it asks you for a join code, put in 10484 and your name. And we'll see if we just have a couple people in there, that's great. If we get more, that's even better. <laughs> it oh, we got somebody's in there. All right. Ashley Langford is our first troop into our game, awesome. It's join.quizzes.com, and hopefully you can see this. The number is 10484. And now Shelly's in. Welcome, Shelly. <laughs> Each time you join, you get a, a, a different animal avatar. Um, sometimes students are disappointed in what they get. Sometimes they're excited. <laughs> oh, your laptop's not cooperating. Well, 
that that actually happens in the classroom quite a bit too. Sometimes people can't can't get in. So I uh, want a few more people join. All right. It's very similar to Kahoot. It's a different company. I've actually spoke with one of the developers. It was developed by a, a couple of college buddies in India, and they just had this vision for a game, and it, it does. It looks super similar to Kahoot. You would think it's just a different game mode in Kahoot, but it's, it's a completely different company. It will take a separate account. We have, we have nine troops in there. That's going to be enough for us to play. I'm going to click start game, but I'm also going to do something weird. While some of it is, yeah, that, that's important. It's completely, totally free. And from my talk with, the, with one of the founders, he said it'll always be free for teachers. I worry about this because then what about ads? He said their business model is maybe charging parents for some sort of access, but they want to keep it completely free for teachers. So I'm going to open up a, a new window here, and I'm actually going to join quizzes. So that those of you that, that aren't one of our troops can still get in. Quizzes has this nice winter theme right now. And OK, now I got to remember 10484. So this is what a student would do. And they type in their name and join. OK, I'm getting an avatar. Those of you that joined, you saw this screen already. It is great to have free things for teachers. Yes. OK. Here I am, and I'm that awesome bird. I'm not going to feel disappointed. I'm going to be excited that, that I got that bird. <laughs> All right, and now as the teacher, back on the teacher end, unlike Kahoot, you don't look at my screen for the answers. As the teacher, my screen shows a real-time view of the data. I can see how many questions are right, how many are wrong, and the progress of each of my students. So instead of them having to look up here and back at their device, all the, the question and answers are all on their device. And if you're playing along, you're going to notice you get a different question at a different time. Uh, at the end, there will be a leaderboard, but all the questions are randomized. Oh, you got it to work. Awesome. I'm glad you're in. So I'm going to click Start Game. And uh, it should be starting for those of you signed in. And then I'm going to switch over to Student View. And those of you can play at home. <laughs> and those of you watching get to cheat a little bit because you'll see questions ahead of time. But I get a question and responses right on my device as a student. So uh, Periscope broadcast can be filmed vertically or horizontally, vertically only or horizontally only. Um, I'm going to choose vertically or horizontally because I've used Periscope enough to know. <laughs> All right. And in between each one, they have really cute memes, these funny pictures that show up. I can see the ranking real quick. And now as a student, I get the next question. Uh, what's the name of the live streaming app that is like Periscope but can have up to four people appear in the video? As a student, I know that that is Blab. Woo! Now, the faster you answer, I forgot to tell you this, it's like, the faster you answer, the more points you get. So I'm going kind of slow because I'm reading the question out loud. Uh, when broadcasting, what does double tapping the screen do? Let's, let's just uh, get this wrong so you can see. Block all comments. And oh, zero points. And there's my meme. <laughs> the memes are really fun. They're, they're pretty cute. All right. Another question. How long after the live broadcast does a Periscope replay expire? 24 hours. Hopefully lots of our friends get to see this before it expires. Or it's on catch.me. So not a big deal. Um, what is Periscope's parent company? Well, you sign in with Twitter. So it is Twitter. So yes, each student goes at their very own pace. You don't have to wait for each student to answer the question before going on. That does have one disadvantage of you can't discuss the questions with, as a whole class until everybody is done, because everybody's at a different part and have had different questions. Uh, Periscope was released in March. <laughs> All right, and let's see. That was question six. I must have had seven questions. Okay, each time the user joins, they can give up to... 500 hearts. <laughs> you are welcome. I'm glad you like it. It's, it's a really neat tool. <laughs> Waiting for everyone to finish is so boring. Well, if you're in my classroom, um, then I would have other things for you to do <laughs> while you were uh, waiting to be done. But at least you wouldn't have to wait in between each one. You just have to wait at the very end of the quiz to see how everybody did. Um, so then I see my rank was 4. My accuracy was 85%. And if I switch over to the teacher view, Here's what the teacher sees. So I don't have to, sh I really wouldn't show this to my class, but I can see that collectively we had 67 correct and 25 wrong. 
it does randomize each question for each device and will randomize the options too. So be careful of having an all of the above question. <laughs> so then um, it looks like uh, we, I can see, you know, Ashley missed a couple. Is there anybody that, that got 100%? Terry hasn't finished. I'm going to end the game so we can see this. I can tell, by the way, I can tell Terry didn't finish because she has a gray line there. And sometimes people don't finish because they've lost connection. Um, maybe she lost interest. <laughs> But I'm going to end the game, and I'll get this handy chart, which I can download as an Excel spreadsheet if I'd like. So here I can see Amy. Amy, you got the most points, and you got them all wrong. <laughs> Round of applause. Let's give Amy some hearts for being our winner. And I think she's the only one that got them all right. So Amy knows quite a bit about Periscope. So here I can see um, question and student in this chart. <laughs> Amy, look at all those hearts. Awesome. And now I can see questions. Each question, I can see the number right and the number wrong. And then I could use this to do some reteaching, perhaps. <laughs> you are a Periscope geek, aren't you, Amy? Congratulations. So you can see some of the differences and similarities to Kahoot. I would, I would say that you could use either one. You like this better than In general, I like this better, too. But I do know as a teacher, there are times when I want to discuss each question as we go. And this is not the tool for you. Kahoot is better for that. But um, in, in other cases, this is, this is the tool for you. And check this out. I'm going to save the data. Again, I could save it as, oh, it's saving as an Excel spreadsheet right now. I don't need that. Um, I'm going to go back to my home. And let's see. I'm going to go to my quizzes. And when I, when I start this quiz, I could assign it as homework, and I can have it expire up to two weeks later. Because unlike a, a Kahoot, where everybody has to look at my screen, you have your own screen, which means that a quiz can be taken at any time before I make it expire. And I'll have a code just like before. So this works great at a classroom center or station because students could cycle through and play. They don't each need their own device right now. So definitely some advantages over Kahoot. And then again, that big disadvantage is that it's student paced for, you know, there might be times when you want what you do to be teacher paced. Okay, great. Look, we have a couple minutes for questions. You can add pictures as a background to each question. There are no support for videos. Um, questions, there, there's not currently a way that I know of to have the questions read aloud to students. With Kahoot, that's another advantage is that if it's teacher paced, you can read the question and responses aloud to your students. Uh, quizzes, uh, you can't do that for the whole class. Can uh, kids retake to improve? Uh, if it's left open as homework, I think they could put in the code and take it again and again, yes. Uh, the questions can be pictures. You can upload a picture or put in a URL to a picture. That's true. Um, the answers cannot include a picture. However, they do have, and this is new to quizzes, they do have an insert uh, menu for Greek, Latin, uh, special characters, and math characters. So they do have, you know, like some fractions and square roots, but uh, that you could use in your question or option answers. Um, you know, if I go to create, it's pretty, pretty easy here. I name my quiz, and I can make it public or private because you, just like Kahoot, people could search through their library and take your questions. And then here, the neat thing is, as I type on this side, I see a preview of what the question will look like over here. So I have option one. Um, you can see I have to at least have two, but I can have two to four options. And I say which one is correct. Yep, and quizzes.com is the URL. Thank you for sharing that. The other cool thing is if I want to search for questions, I could search, and they call this teleporting, I can teleport somebody else's question into uh, mine. So if I wanted a question about, I don't know, let's say inventors, and I only wanted this one question from this one quiz, I click plus, and it's teleported into my questions, and that's where I can edit it and all that. So um, again, uh, thank you for, for tuning in. I hope that you enjoy quizzes. Uh, if you don't know about Kahoot, try that one out too. It's very, very similar. There's not a limit to making your quizzes. You can use it as much as you want, and uh, you can use the teleport option as much as you want. Uh, it's, it's a neat thing. So uh, 
I'll, I'll leave you with this. I'm on Periscope as at Tony Vincent and Twitter at Tony Vincent. And then I'm brand new to Instagram. So I, and I'm posting techie things on Instagram. So find me at learning in hand. That's my website. And that's what I am on Instagram. And I'd, I'd love to have a follow. I think I can teach you more and uh, I'll see you on Periscope another time. And on the I teach TV network, uh, I will uh, see you in about a month. And I'll answer that one last question. You can have multiple quizzes open at a time for homework. So that's, that's important too. The developers of quizzes are super responsive. They want to make this great for teachers. And I think they really have. They've improved it over the year that I've been using it. Um, I've had 100 and almost 200 people take one quizzes at once. So that tells you how powerful it is. Great. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, I will see you later.